They knew if they didn't give TARP, it would shut down. That's probably what should have happened. It should have shut down. But Americans weren't prepared for it. Now we've had all this time to prepare. And people like George Soros, and people have built the framework to be able, so they are prepared. The question is, are you? Because the, the Fed has their moment to make that decision the day after the election. Then we go into Bush tax cuts. Then we have to go into austerity programs to be able to sell our debt. I think it's in March. A lot of our debt comes due again. China doesn't want to buy it. China is already saying, you're devaluing our money. If you remember what China said two years ago, the Chinese foreign minister came over here. And this, these words stuck out to me because if you understand the Asian culture, this is important. His warning was, do not dishonor our people's investment. If we inflate our money, we have dishonored their trust and their investment. It's not going to go well. The best thing they can do is make the case that tough times are coming, but it will be worth it. But we'll see if we have a couple of those people that can actually make that case. I, I haven't heard that case yet. Back in a second. One of the biggest problems going on in the country is the government. The war is a huge problem. Concern about people and about uh, insurance, about social security, and human rights. America, we are, we are facing uh, tough times. Uh, the election's not going to turn things around. It's just the beginning of a different phase of it. The question is, are we prepared for it? And do we have people that can actually lead us through a storm, take our hands and say, it's okay, it's okay. It's going to be tough, but it's okay. Joining us from Colorado is Tom Tancredo, former congressman who's now running for governor of Colorado, American Constitution Party. Ryan Frazier, he is a Republican running for Congress in Colorado also. And joining us from Arizona is Ruth McClung. She is a 28-year-old. She's a Republican. She's just a physicist who's now running for Congress. So let me, um, actually, Ryan, let me start with you. Um, make the case that is going to have to be made that we're going to have to stop spending and people are going to, uh, people are going to, we're going to go on hard times, um, but that's better for us and the rich should not be taxed more. Well, Glenn, I can only, I can only make the case that right now the national deficit is over 1.3 trillion. The national debt is over $13.4 trillion. That's $43,000 for every American. I certainly think that's more than enough debt, and we need to work to get that Take down. Take it from the rich. unacceptable, immoral, and I think un-American to pass that type of debt on to future generations Take of it our from, grandchildren. But let, let me ask say this to you. Take it from the rich. The rich don't pay their <clears throat> fair share. They won't miss it anyway. I, will, I think that the American taxpayer right now pays more than their fair share. In fact, I've seen analysis that suggests we have to work three to four months before we actually pay off our tax burden. I think what we need right now is to look at ways in which we grow the economy. And increasing taxes is not going to get us there, Glenn. We have to extend the 2001 and 2003 tax relief measures because we have to incentivize the type of behavior that we know grows an economy. These are common sense policies. Jobs are created by the private sector, not by government. And if we truly want to grow our economy so that people can get back to work, we have to incentivize it by keeping taxes low on all Americans. All right. Ruth, can you make the case? Because there are 99ers out there, people who have been out of work. Some of them are organizing with SEIU, and it's purely political. But a lot of people want to have a job, can't find a job. Um, at this rate, we are talking about just replacing the jobs that we've lost, we're talking about not replacing those jobs until 2021. There's going to be a lot of pain out there. Make the case that the, that the rich do pay their fair share, that, are, that, uh, that cutting <coughs> taxes and cutting spending when people need help is the right thing to do. Well, what we really need to do is we need to create jobs. You were mentioning we need these jobs. And what often happens is you spill something on the table and you're mopping up the floor. We need to go to the root of the cause. 
What is causing the joblessness right now in this country? Why are we not getting these unemployment numbers down? Why? And that comes down to we need to see what's happening with the small businesses out there. Many of them are worried about the future. They don't know what their taxes are going to be. I don't know what my taxes are going to be next year. This is something uncertainty kills small businesses. And then you have these... Um, these new bills that are being pushed through, they don't know how the health care bill is going to affect them. They don't know how that financial overhaul bill is going to affect them. So really when they talk about um, all these programs, what we really need to do is what's the root of the cause? People want a paycheck. They want the paycheck. They don't want the handout. They don't want the food stamp. They want the paycheck. How can we bring jobs back to this country? And that's the real underlying issue we need to address. Can government create jobs? Not really. Um, I want to go to Tom Tancredo, and I want to uh, wrap it up with him uh, when we come back on states' rights. And um, because I, we're all about who thinks that who thinks we're going to let California slide into the abyss? <laughs> Nobody. Right. We're going to we're going to bail them out, um, and it is going to be states that draw the line in the sand. And so we'll ask Tom what his plans are if he were governor of Colorado on drawing that line in the sand when we come back. First of all, jobs, and probably second, the economy. The job market, you know, the potential help that people need. I love technology, but so many jobs are being lost to technology. Corruption in D.C. and unemployment. Joining us from uh, Colorado now is Tom Tancredo. He is a former congressman who is now running for governor, and uh, he's running not as a Republican, but the um, as an American Constitution Party. Um, are you a tenther? Tom, <laughs> you bet I'm a tenth. <laughs> I know. They try to make that into like it's a really bad thing. He believes crazy. He believes in the Tenth Amendment, states' rights. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom, am I wrong to say that there, California is coming with their hands open and this government will give it to them? Um, if the Republicans would hold the line, California will fail and that'll just domino across everything. What is your responsibility if you were the governor to hold the line? and to say, no, we're not taking these handouts, we're not, California is California, we're Colorado. How do you do that? Yeah, because we'll get into the, if we take them, we'll get into exactly the same situation they're in. I, here's what I, I say all the time, Glenn, tell every group I, I, I come across. Um, the day after I'm elected, I'm gonna pick up the phone, I'm gonna call a couple of people. One will be Chris Christie in New Jersey, and the other is gonna be Dan Brewer in Arizona. And I'm gonna say to them, listen, you guys, maybe, Individually, we, we wouldn't be able to do what I'm suggesting, what I'm going to suggest, but together. And maybe there'll be a couple of other governors out there that we can pull on the phone at the same time and say, together, let's do this. Let's the three, four, five of us as governors, let's start a Tenth Amendment revolution in the country. Let's tell the federal government, you know what, here is the line, and you're not going to cross it. You're not going to take any more land from the state of Colorado or any other state that's involved with this. You're not going to tell us how to live our lives. You're not going to dangle any more money out there, or if you do, we're not going to take it because it costs way too damn much to take federal dollars. We can't afford it anymore, not just in terms of the economic costs, but what it t takes away from us in terms of sovereignty. So let's start a Tenth Amendment revolution in this country. I'm willing to, lo I'm, I'm willing um, to lead it, buddy. I tell you, I think um, Texas would join you in that. I know um, Governor, yeah. Her Governor Herbert in um, Utah is, is strong on, I mean, he's going after the federal government for taking, I mean, Utah, if you look at the map of Utah, most of it oh. is federal land. It's, it's, unlike That's any right. other state, they, they got nothing. And so he's going back and saying, we want our land back. Um, yeah. You remember believe... that little land grab, the last thing Bill Clinton did before he left? Yeah. Took, what, yeah. three, a quarter of the state of Utah? Right. So, uh, Tom, what happens from here? What do you, what do you, what do you see happening um, six months from now? Where are we? Well, I think of it as a great opportunity. We've, we've got all these deficits in Colorado, just like the federal government, but I think of it as an opportunity because never before, Glenn, have we had the ability, I think, to actually do something amazing, and that is to cut down the size of government, to but shrink you, the size of cause, government. You know now, and I know that will cause people pain in Colorado who will then say, yeah. your policies are hurting people. How do you convince them? Yes, 
It is, but we have to fundamentally change. Right. It's the medicine we've got to take because we can't kick this can down the road any longer. If you do, you are simply giving your children a sentence, a, 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 essentially a, a, an economic death sentence. We cannot do this to the country. And I'm going to tell the people of the state of Colorado, here are the things we're going to have to do. Some of it you may not like, but it's got to be done, and we've got to start now. No more whistling past the graveyard. Um, it's amazing, America, how many times we have been told in the past that the day will come, the, the reckoning will come when we have to pay the debt that we have racked up. I've heard it my whole life. I remember, I think, I think even Nixon talked about it. Um, it's here. Now the choice is on Tuesday. Back in a second. We want to thank our three guests, two from Colorado, Tom, Ryan, one from Arizona, Ruth. Three candidates for your consideration. From New York, good night, America.